I, I I'm going to read from is from my story, Wayang Satu, Eight Scenes of a Different Drama. So I'm, a, I'm talking, I'm, I wrote about this place whose name is now fading into many people's obscurity in Singapore. And, in a, and some of us still remember what it is, this place, but the point of the whole story is that things keep changing in Singapore. New things get built up, old things get torn down, and the cycle will continue again and again, or so it would seem. And at the same time, what do we Singaporeans remember? Eight scenes, why is that two eight scenes of a different drama? There are eight scenes, I will read, just read a few, one or two, or maybe maximum three. 1968, wrong number at Gold Hill Gardens. The black phone rings. Little Thomas Tan jumps up, I'll get it. He drops his toy cars and scurries across the living room. No, commands his father Patrick from the dining table, I'll get it. The seven-year-old stops mid-run, disappointed. Patrick peels himself away from the Saturday paper and answers the call. Hello? Hello? Why are you Sato? Sorry, you've got the wrong number. Patrick nearly puts the phone down when it rings again. He picks up the call. It is the same uneducated, glottalized voice of the phone that rings against his English teacher years. Hello? Why are you Sato? No, I've told you already. Is this 52871? Yes. Then you are the guy why I'm Sato. This is 52871, but this isn't the guy why I'm Sato. Stop calling, please. Patrick nearly slams the headset down, irritated with the senseless disruptions with Saturday morning. Damn these wisdom calls. We've been here three months and they still keep coming. Because he senses Thomas watching him, Patrick, at the last moment, settles the receiver gently into its cradle. Thomas asks, uh, What's Wayang Satu, Dad? Wayang Satu is a place not far from here. That way, replies Patrick, gesturing vaguely towards the back of the house, corner of Stevens and Bukit Timah Road. <laughs> huh? I'll show you the next time we drive past. Dad? If we're here and why am Saku over there, why do all people always call here? There's a shop of the die at Wayang Satu, near where the old police supposed to be. I don't know why the calls to the shop sometimes end up in our house. I've complained to the telephone people so many times and still the problem isn't fixed yet. The phone rings once more. Patrick stares at the machine. What are the chances? Thomas gazes at him, expecting him to do the necessary. Reluctantly, Patrick answers. Hello? Good morning. Uh, is this Wayang Satu grocery shop? The voice is new. Mission school educated Patrick recognizes the crisp tones of genuine received pronunciation. He hesitates. This is absurd. Three wrong numbers in a row. He shakes his head and laughs silently to himself. Instead of screaming abuse down the phone, he plays along. Yes, this is Wayang Satu. Thomas widens his eyes in surprise, interjecting, But Dad! Patrick motions for Thomas to pipe down while he responds to the list of groceries being named over the phone with appropriate ahas, as if actually taking down the order. Finally, he ends the call. Yes, madam. Delivery to 14 Delby Road by 2 p.m. Goodbye. This receiver is barely out of Patrick's hand when Thomas launches his protest thick and fast. Daddy, you lied! Why? You told me not to lie! I know, son. But think of this way, replied Patrick, grinning at his old genius. If the groceries are never delivered, the woman will get angry with the shop and stop calling to buy things. Then we can live in peace. The phone rings again. Nineteen seventy five and after. As the sun sets, Ahun, 
locks the collapsible steel gates of Gadai Wang Satu for the last time. Why bother? Nothing to steal. Out of habit, he peers between the metal bars for a final look. The water marks along the back wall are the only signs of his yearly struggle to salvage trucks and survivors to send them friends. Yes, notes float within the shop in the place of shells filled with tin food, sacks of rice and dry goods, or piles of firewood and coconuts during the Japanese occupation stacked against the far corner. The desk where he did his accounts and received ever cheap will be phone calls after the fishing pulled out of No! He admonishes himself when he imagines the middle area being filled with new refrigeration units. How can he compete with cold storage and the new supermarkets like NTUC and Yaohan at his age? His best option is still to close the business and retire when the lease is not being renewed and the land will be re redeveloped. A breeze from the tr street traffic blows into the shop. The dust notes battle with each other. How time flies. Decades of blood and sweat gone just like that. Ahun! He turns away from his reverie and is surprised to see Mrs. Reed, the ancient matriarch of Robin Close, nearby, and one of his steadiest customers. She hobbles towards him from the other end of the shop house row with the help of a faithful Indonesian maid. He replies, Hello, Mrs. Reed. Ahun! Glad I caught you. I must return to you from Chinese New Year, says Mrs. Reed motioning to the tied-up stack of paper mache egg trays held by the maid. Ahun raises his eyebrows. This is me, you are frugal, but you're giving me back all this when I close my shop for good. His eyebrows rise even more when Mrs. Lee blasts hold of his right hand and he feels a stiff red angbao in his palm. And I wanted to give you this, the old woman continues, for luck in your retirement. Ayo, Mrs. Wee, no need la, no need. You keep it, Ahun. You provided good service for many years. Wow, thank you, Mrs. Wee. In his three-room Angokyo flat, Ahun frames the red packet of money and opens and places it on his home altar, bowing to it during his daily prayers until he succumbs to cancer six years later. The row of shop houses of which Gadai Wang Satu was part is eventually demolished. Various contractors use the land for their site, their site headquarters when the flyovers spanning Bukitima and Denon roads are built, and the Bukitima Canal is widened during the, 90, the 80s and 90s. And the land is turned into a mini tree filled park where a terrier joyfully catches the frisbee that its owners throws at it on weekend afternoons. The park is destroyed when the Authorities build the Stevens MRT station over it. Now just read that last section. 2068. The end of another era. With her granddaughter in tow, Zan emerges onto the street level from the Stevens MRT station. So, what is it you want to show me, Grandma? asks Pauline. Pauline shifts her weight ever so slightly from left to right and back again. Sam detects that the 12 year old is bored out of his stuff. Bless her. She's trying her best to humor her grandmother and not be impolite. It's not far. This way, says Sam, turning right to walk along Bukitina Road. Pauline follows. As she walks forward, <coughs> Sam glances about. God, I haven't been around here for ages and this area has changed. Newer houses and trees and more high rises, that's Singapore for you. Even the flyover has changed. It's not the same one from before. Now, what did my father used to call the flyover? God, my memory is like a sea. Can't remember the name anymore. Some Malay name. Then Sam turns her head left to look beyond the flyover and the canal beside it and gestures in the direction of Dunham Road. She tells Colleen, you know, your great-grandfather used to own a terrace house over that side. My father, your great-grandfather, grew up there. Oh, really? The house is gone now, but I visited the place when I was a little girl before it was sold. 
I have a picture somewhere. I must show it to you. Okay. From Pauline's lack of enthusiasm, Sam is aware that her granddaughter would prefer to be home, drowning her senses with the latest pop phenomenon rather than spending an afternoon out with her grandmother. I cannot be disheartened. This child must know more about Singapore, about family history. If she never understands where she comes from, she'll be yet another clueless teen lost in the now. Ah, here we are, says Sam, coming to a halt. Uh, Grandma, exactly what are we supposed to look at? That. That condo being torn down? Yes. We travel all this way just to see a building being demolished? It's not just any old apartment block. It's Robin Residences. Your great-grandfather helped to create and market the condominium. In fact, it is the last of the buildings that Thomas Tan had a hand in developing. Ah, how sad. By next week, it will be all gone. And in no time at all, a new fancy block will stand in its place. The look of disbelief on Pauline's face tells Sam that she has pushed her granddaughter too far in coming to see bulldozers and jackhammers tear down something of little direct relevance to her adolescence. But I have no regrets. I have done my duty with the bonus of saying goodbye to one last piece of promise.